Eso fue una de las declaraciones que hizo Jan Lee Kun durante la NVIDIA GTC 2025. Y creo que ese clip se ha hecho viral en Twitter porque, siendo sinceros, ahora mismo en el mundo de la inteligencia artificial, los modelos de lenguaje grande, LLM, son claramente los que se están llevando la mayor parte del bombo. Por supuesto, si no te suena quién es Jan Lee Kun, en realidad es uno de los padrinos de la investigación en inteligencia artificial y lleva metido en este campo desde hace muchísimo tiempo. No es precisamente un novato cuando lanza afirmaciones como esta. Lo hace con con años y años de conocimiento y experiencia a sus espaldas. Así que cuando alguien con este nivel de experiencia dice algo así, deja a mucha gente preguntándose ¿y si tiene razón? Escucha el resto de la conversación donde habla sobre los cuatro enfoques principales. So, uh, Jan, there's been a lot of interesting things going on in the last year in, in AI. What has been the most exciting development in, in your opinion over the past year? Uh, too many to count. But I tell you one thing which may surprise a few of you. Um, I'm not so interested in LLMs anymore. You know, they're kind of the last thing they are in the hands of, you know, industry product people kind of, you know, improving at the margin, uh, trying to get, you know, more data, more compute, generating uh, synthetic data. Um, I think there are more interesting questions in uh, four, four things. How you get machines to understand the physical world? And Jensen talked about this mm -hmm. this morning in this keynote. How do you get, get them to have persistent memory, which not too many people talk about? And then the last two are, how do you get them to reason and plan? And there is some effort, of course, to get you know, LLMs to reason. But in my opinion, it's a very kind of simplistic way of uh, viewing, um, viewing reasoning. I think there are probably kind of more, you know, better way of, uh, of doing this. So, um, so I'm excited about things that a lot of people in this community, in the tech community, mm -hmm. might get excited about five years from now. Um, but right now, it doesn't look so exciting because it's some obscure academic paper. Y aquí es donde Jan Lee Kuhn habla sobre los world models y plantea que basarse únicamente en el texto como modelo del mundo no es suficiente para alcanzar una IA general. Dice que la predicción del siguiente token, aunque funciona bastante bien con texto, no sirve realmente cuando se trata de realizar acciones en el mundo físico, como las que hacemos los humanos. Pero si no es un LLM que está reasoning sobre el mundo físico y tener memoria de persistente, ¿qué es? ¿Qué es el modelo de the underlying model going to be? Um, so, a lot of people are working on world models, right? So, what is a world model? A world model is, uh, we all have world models in our, in our mind. Uh, this is what allows us to um, kind of, you know, manipulate thoughts, essentially. So, you know, we have a model of the, of the current world. You, you know that if I, if I push on this, on this bottle here from the top, it's probably going to flip, but if I push on it at the bottom, it's, it's going to slide. Um, and, you know, if I press on you too hard, it might pop. So we have models of the physical world that we acquire in the first few months of life, and that's what allows us to deal with the real world. And it's much more difficult to deal with the real world than to deal with language. And so the, the type of architectures that I think we need for systems that really can deal with the real world is completely different from the ones that we deal with at the moment, right? Uh, LLMs predict tokens. Right, but are, tokens could be anything. I mean, so our you know, autonomous vehicle no, model can't. uses tokens, tokens from the sensors, and it produces tokens that drive. And in some sense, it's reasoning about the physical world, at least where it's safe to drive and you won't run into poles. Um, why, why aren't tokens the right way to represent the physical world? Tokens are discrete, okay? So when we talk about token, generally, we talk about uh, a, a, a finite set of possibilities. In a typical LLM, the number of possible tokens is on the order of 100,000 or something like that, right? Um, so, when you train a system to predict tokens, you can never train it to predict the exact token that's going to follow a sequence in text, for example, but you can produce a probability distribution of all the possible tokens in your dictionary. You know, it's just a long vector of 100,000 numbers between 0 and 1, that's on to 1. We know how to do this. We don't know how to do this with, uh, with video, with what, you know, natural data that is high dimensional and continuous. And every attempt at trying to get systems to understand the world or build mental models of the world by being trained to predict videos at the pixel level basically have failed. Um, even, at the, even to train a system like a, a neural net of some kind to learn good representations of images, every technique that works by reconstructing 
an image from a, a corrupted or transformed version of it basically has failed, not completely failed, they cannot work, but they don't work as well as alternative architectures that we call joint embedding, which uh, essentially don't attempt to reconstruct at the pixel level. They try to learn a representation, an abstract representation of the image or the video or the natural uh, uh, signal that is, is being trained on so that you can make prediction in that abstract representation space. Um, the example I use very often is that if I take a video of this room and I kind of pan a camera and I stop here and I ask the system to predict, you know, what's the continuation of that video, it's probably going to predict there's a room and there's people sitting, blah, blah, blah. It can, there's no way it can predict what every single one of you looks like, right? That's completely unpredictable from the initial segment of the video. And so there's a lot of things in the world that are just not predictable. And if you train a system to predict at the pixel level, it spends all of its resources trying to come up with details that it just cannot invent. And so that's just a complete waste of resources. And every attempt that we've tried, and I've been working on this for 20 years, uh, of training a system using self-supervised learning by predicting video, doesn't work. It only works if you do it at the representation level. And what that means is that those architectures are not lo que viene a decir aquí es que usar un transformer para predecir el mundo físico simplemente no funciona, por una cuestión de arquitectura. Y de hecho, plantea algunos puntos clave. Si solo estás prediciendo el siguiente token, hay muchísimas cosas que das por sentadas gracias a tu experiencia directa con el mundo físico y a estar presente en él. Y todo este razonamiento que ocurre en tu cerebro, que das por hecho sin pensarlo, es fundamental. Así que sí, creo que ahí tiene un buen punto. Ese enfoque no termina de funcionar. Ahora bien, como dije antes, no es que esté de acuerdo con Jan Lee Kuhn solo por que sí. Hay artículos de investigación que respaldan esta idea. China hizo bastante investigación sobre Sora y básicamente lo que concluyeron fue que este tipo de arquitecturas no predicen realmente el mundo físico. De hecho, no recuerdo exactamente qué experimento hicieron, pero en el artículo demostraban que estos modelos de vídeo no están interpretando el mundo tal cual es, sino que más bien lo imitan, en parte por cómo están diseñados. Fue un análisis bastante interesante, la verdad. Si ves el vídeo lo entenderás con más profundidad. Claro, es muy fácil decir esto no funciona, aquello tampoco, pero ahora llegamos al meollo del vídeo, que es vale, ya sabemos que esto no funciona, pero ¿cuál es la solución? Y aquí es donde Jan Lee Kuhn habla sobre su conocida arquitectura VJEPA. Al parecer dentro de poco van a sacar la versión 2 y todo apunta a que está dando los resultados más prometedores que hemos visto hasta ahora en este tipo de modelos. You know, Jensen is absolutely right that uh, you get ultimately more power in a system that, that can sort of, you know, reason. Mm -hmm. I, I disagree with the fact that the proper way to do reasoning is the way, you know, current mm -hmm. uh, LLMs are, mm -hmm. have, are augmented by, by reasoning ability. So you're saying it works, to, but it's not the right way. It's not the right way. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, when, when we reason, when we think, we do this in some sort of abstract mental, mm -hmm. mental uh, state that has nothing to do with language. Oh, like so you don't like animals. kicking the tokens out. You want to be reasoning in your um, latent space and it's not in token space. It's our latent abstract space, space yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, if I, if I tell you, you know, imagine a cube floating in front of you, and I rotate that cube by 90 degrees around a vertical axis. Okay. You can do this mentally. That has nothing to do with language. Um, uh, you know, a cat could do this. Uh, we can't specify the problem to a cat, obviously, <laughs> through language. But, you know, cats do things that are much more complex than this when they plan, like, uh, you know, some trajectories to jump on a piece of furniture, right? They, they do things that are much more complex than that. And um, that is not related to language. It's certainly not done in, so, you know, token space, which would be kind of actions. Mm -hmm. It's done in sort of abstract mental space. So that's, uh, that's kind of the challenge of the, of the mm -hmm. next few years, um, which is to figure out new architectures that allow this type of, of thing. That's what I've been yeah. working on for the last, uh, so, last so, so is there a new model we should be expecting that allows us to do reasoning in this abstract space? Uh, it's called, we call it JEPA, uh, mm -hmm. or JEPA World Models. Mm -hmm. um, and we've, you know, um, my, my colleagues and I have kind of put out a bunch of uh, mm -hmm. papers on this, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. first steps towards towards this over the last few years. So JEPA means Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture. This is those world models that learn abstract representations that are capable of sort of manipulating those representations uh, and, and, and perhaps reason and produce sequences of actions to you know, arrive at a particular goal. I, th I think that's the, that's the future. I wrote a long paper about this that explains uh, how, how this might work about, about three years ago. Vamos a echar un vistazo a cómo es realmente la arquitectura VJEPA, según el vídeo que Meta lanzó el año pasado. La que tenemos ahora es un VJEPA, getting close to version two, where basically it's one of those joint-time predictive architectures, so it's just prediction 
on, on video, but at the representation level. And it seems to work really well. We have an example of this. The first version of this is trained on very short videos, just 16 frames. And it's trained to uh, basically predict the representation of a full video from a version of, of a partially masked one. And that system apparently is able to tell you whether a particular video is physically possible or not, at least in restricted cases. And it gives you a binary output. This is feasible, this is not, or maybe? Well, no, it's yeah. simpler than this. You, yeah. you measure the prediction error that the system mm -hmm. produces. So you take a, a sliding window of those 16 frames on a video, mm -hmm. and you look at, you know, can you predict like the next few frames? And you, you measure the prediction error. And when something really strange happens in the video, like an object disappears or changes shape, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, something like that, or spontaneously appears or doesn't obey physics. So it's, it's learned what is physically the, realistic just by observing videos. Yeah. yeah, these are, you know, uh, I mean, you train it on natural videos, and then you test it on synthetic video where something really weird happens. Right. And so if you trained it on videos where really weird things happen, that would become normal, and it wouldn't uh, yeah, that's right. detect those as being right. odd. Yeah. So you don't do that. <laughs> Aquí es donde Jan Likun habla sobre el pensamiento del Sistema 1 y Sistema 2. Como humanos, tenemos dos modos de pensar. El Sistema 1 es prácticamente reactivo, mientras que el Sistema 2 es cuando realmente reflexionamos sobre algo durante un tiempo más largo. Y este es el paradigma reciente al que los LLMs han llegado. Es justamente esto lo que menciona Jan Likun cuando dice que los sistemas de inteligencia artificial esencialmente carecen de algunas de esas capacidades intuitivas. Y eso es lo que realmente necesitamos para tener un sistema sistema integral que de alguna manera nos acerca a la agi general. Uh, and it, it connects with something that we are all very familiar with, right? So psychologists talk about system one and system two. System one is tasks that you can accomplish without really sort of thinking about them. They, they become, you become used to them and you, you can accomplish them without thinking too much about them. So if you are an experienced driver, you can drive even without driving assistance. You can drive without thinking about it much. You know, you can talk to someone at the same time. You can, you know, um, et cetera. But if you are, a, a, if you drive for the first time, or the first few hours, you are, you are at, the, dangerous. at the wheel. Yeah. You have to refocus <laughs> on what you're doing, right? And you're planning all kinds of catastrophe scenarios and stuff like that. Imagine all kind of, all kind of things. So that's system two. You're recruiting your entire prefrontal cortex to your, your world model, your internal world model, to uh, figure out the, you know, what's, what's going to happen, mm -hmm. and then plan action so that good things happen. Um, whereas when you're familiar with this, you, you can just uh, use system one and sort of uh, do this automatically. And so this, this idea that you start by uh, you know, using your world model, and you're able to accomplish a task, even a task that you've never encountered before, zero shot, right? You don't have to be trained to solve that task. You can, just, so you can just accomplish that task without learning anything, just on the basis of your understanding of, of the world and your planning abilities. That's what's missing in current systems. But if you accomplish that task multiple times, then eventually it gets compiled into what's called a policy, right? So a, mm -hmm. a sort of reactive system that allows you to just, just accomplish that task without, without planning. Uh, so the first thing, this reasoning is system two, the sort of automatic, subconscious, reactive policy, that's system one. Um, LLMs can do system one and are, are trying to inching their way towards system two, but ultimately I think we need a different architecture for system two. Aquí es donde llegamos a las declaraciones posteriores de Jan Lee Kuhn, donde menciona que simplemente no vamos a llegar a la AGI a través de los LLMs. Y en parte, estoy de acuerdo. Creo que en el futuro los sistemas que realmente sean inteligencia artificial general probablemente serán una especie de híbrido. Serán una mezcla de todas esas capacidades y de hecho, ya hemos visto que las empresas de IA están avanzando hacia los omnimodelos. Hemos visto que Google lo está haciendo recientemente. Es realmente interesante escucharle hablar sobre esto porque no creo que esté tan alejado de la realidad y será muy interesante ver hacia dónde nos lleva el futuro. Uh, but the real world is just much more complicated. Like, okay, here is uh, something that you, some of you may have heard me say in the past. Uh, current LLMs are trained typically with something like on the order of 30 trillion tokens, right? Token typically is about three bytes. So that's 0.9, 10 to the 13 bytes. Let's say 10 to the 14 bytes. Um, that would take any of us over 400,000 years to read through that, because that's kind of the totality of all the text available on the internet, mm -hmm. right? Now, a, a psychologist uh, tell us that a four-year-old has been awake a total of 16,000 hours. 
And we have about two megabytes going to our visual cortex through our optic nerve um, every second, two megabytes per second, roughly. Multiply this by 16,000 hours times 3,600, it's about 10 to the 14 bytes. In four years, through vision, mm -hmm. you see as much data as text that would take you 400,000 years to read. I mean, that tells you we're never going to get to AGI, whatever you mean by this, uh, by just training from text. It's just not happening. Si has llegado hasta este punto del video, dale like, suscríbete y déjame saber qué piensas en los comentarios.